Welcome, Math 20-1. We're going to do quadratic equations. We're going to solve some word problems using quadratic equations today. All right. First question. First word problem. The product of two consecutive even integers is 224. Find those integers. So step one, let's identify some variables. All right. It says the product and two consecutive and even integers. So if I let x equal the first integer, then x plus 2 must be the second even integer. If you pick any even number and add 2 to it, you're going to get the next even number. All right. The product of those two integers is 224, so I can now make an equation. First integer times the second integer should equal 224. That's a quadratic equation. Expand the left side. x squared plus 2x equals 224. Set it equal to 0. And we can factor this. We could solve it using the quadratic formula. We could complete the square. We could graph it. But this one lends itself really nice to factoring. So let's factor this quadratic equation. x plus 16 times x minus 14 works nicely. Set each factor equal to 0. And solve those simple equations. So x can be either negative 16 or positive 14. So this word problem has two solutions. Let's check them both out. All right. So there's two possible solutions for x, negative 16, positive 14. When x is negative 16, then the integers are negative 16 and negative 16 plus 2, negative 14. When x is positive 14, there's two answers, 14 and 14 plus 2, which is 16. These are two situations that both satisfy the word problem. Word problem 2. All right, let's try question two. The side of one square is three centimeters longer than the side of another. The combined area is 117 square centimeters. So if I say the side of one square has a length of x and the side of the second square has a length of x plus three, we're ready to work with this, this question. I can now write an equation. Uh, what does it say? Their combined area. So the area of one square is side times side, or x squared. The other side would be x plus 3, all squared, for the other area of the square. And then their sum would be 117. So expand out the x plus 3, all squared. x squared adds 6, x add 9. Simplify that and set it equal to 0. Now we could factor this. I could divide both sides of this equation by 2 to make it simpler numbers. And I can factor what's inside the bracket as x plus 9 times x minus 6. Now, when I'm using my zero product property, I don't have to worry about the non-variable factors, only the variable ones. So x plus 9 would equal 0, or x minus 6 would equal 0. So x is negative 9, or x is positive 6. Again, we've got two solutions. When I use negative 9, that doesn't make sense, having a side length of negative 9. So the only solution that makes sense is a side length of 6. So the smaller square has a side length of 6. The larger square has a side length of 6 plus 3, or 9 centimeters. Example 3. A factory is to be built on a lot that measures 80 meters by 60 meters. Lawns of uniform width and equal in area to the factory and must surround the factory. How wide is a strip of lawn and what are the dimensions of the factory? So I think a diagram here might be a good idea. So we say that the lot is 80 by 60. And we're going to let the width of the strip of grass or lawn that's around it be a width of x. We're trying to find out the length or the width of that strip of lawn, the value of x. That's what our variable is. All right, so what things do we know? So if we're labeling the width as x, of the lawn and the dimensions of the lot are 80 by 60, I can figure out the dimensions of the actual factory in brown. So this length is 60 subtract x subtract x. So I can say this length is 60 minus 2x. And the length of the factory would be 80 subtract x here and subtract x there. So I want to use that information to solve for the value of x. We're told that the lawn is uniform width and equal in area to the factory. 
So if the total area of the fact of the, the whole thing is 80 times 60 or 4,800 square meters, the area of the factory must be the same as the area of the lawn. That means I can find the area of those by dividing the total area by 2. So the area of the factory should be 4,800 divided by 2 or 2,400 square meters. Now that I know the area of the factory is 2,400 square meters and I've got a length and a width for that shape, I can come up with an equation. So the area of the factory should be 2,400 equals length 80 minus 2x times width 60 minus 2x. Expand that out. 80 times 60, 80 times negative 2x, 2x times 60, and negative 2x times negative 2x. And we get that expanded form. And if I set the equation equal to 0 by subtracting 2400 from both sides, I get 4x squared minus 280x plus 2400. Again, I can factor out the 4 or divide the whole equation by 4. I get this simple trinomial. And I can factor it again. What two numbers add to negative 70 multiplied to 600? Those two numbers are 60 and 10, both negative. So if I solve for this equation now, x would equal 60 or x would equal 10. Again, in the context of the question, only one of these dimensions makes sense. If my width of the lawn x is 60 meters, well, the, the whole width of the lot that it's built on is 60 meters. So it would make sense to have a strip of lawn that's 60 meters on all sides. It doesn't make sense, right? So this one's not possible. X must be 10. And that's what we were asked to find. How wide is the strip along? And finally, what are the dimensions of the factory? So the factory should be 60 minus 2 times 10 by 80 minus 2 times 10. So 60 minus 2 times 10 is 40. 80 minus 20 is 60. Example 4. We're told that Kelly's going to drive 230 kilometers in five hours from her home in Whitehorse. For the last 150 kilometers of the trip, she increases her average speed by 10 kilometers per hour. What is the average speed for each distance traveled? So we're talking about a distance speed time situation. So remember that equation, distance equals speed times time. Or if I solve for the variable t by dividing s, distance is time over, sorry, time is distance over speed. With these types of questions, it's nice to make a little chart and fill in the chart. So we're asked to find the average speed. So I'm going to let my variable be for speed. All right. So if I let x equal the slower speed, the faster speed would be x plus 10. Fill that in on our chart. So the slower speed is x. The faster speed is x. So if we figure out her slower distance, 230 in total, minus 150 for the last bit. So the slower distance should be 230 minus 150. And her faster distance should be 150. She increased her speed for the last 150 kilometers. I now have two boxes in my chart filled. I can fill in the third box using this formula. Time is distance over speed. So the time at the slower speed was a distance of 80 divided by x. And the time at the faster speed is a distance of 150 divided by x plus 10. Okay. We have our chart completed. We are now able to write an equation to satisfy and, and solve the, the problem. So, total time is supposed to equal 5 hours. So slower time plus faster time should equal the total time. Here's our slower time, 80 over x. Here's our faster time, 150 over x plus 10. The total time is supposed to be 5 hours. So there's our equation. It doesn't look like a quadratic equation right now. So I want to get rid of these denominators. I'm going to multiply the whole equation by the lowest common denominator, which in this case is x times x plus 10. So I multiply the whole equation by x times x plus 10. I'll eliminate my denominators. We'll turn this into a quadratic equation. So 80 over x multiplied by x times x plus 10. These x's would cancel. I'm left with 80 times x plus 10. 150 over x plus 10 multiplied by x times x plus 10. The x plus 10's would cancel. I'm left with 150 times x. 
And finally, we get equals 5 times x times x plus 10. So this is a quadratic equation. If I expand it out, combine like terms, and simplify. 80x plus 800 plus 150x equals 5x squared plus 50x. Set that equation equal to 0. And we could factor it. So again, we can solve this quadratic part any way we want. I'm going to solve it by factoring. Adds to negative 36, multiplies to negative 160, negative 40, and positive 4. So my solutions are x equals 40, x equals negative 4. Again, one of these makes sense, one doesn't. Does it make sense to have a speed of negative 4? No. So that one's not possible. My speed is 40 when I'm going slower, fasty, <laughs> sorry, 50 when we're going faster. All right. So that's about it. Here's your assignment. Hmm. There we go. Oh, that wasn't so good. Now, some of these word problems you may have done already. Um, I think we did 19 on page 195 already, but some of these word problems have been assigned, some have not. I'm going to try to make sure we get all these done, and we'll work on those in class tomorrow. Thank you.